Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I want to talk about writing a novel. I am writing another novel. I have written things in the past and they were terrible. They were ages ago and very much buried deeply in my computer and not to be opened again. <laughs> That was super dramatic, but today is the day where I'm getting real with you. I'm getting serious. I've been super excited about writing again recently. This past year, I've had this idea that I just could not get out of my head. And it's very different from anything that I've ever written before. So that was something scary about this whole process. It's not YA. I've only ever really written things that were YA because that was a lot of what I was reading, but my past three or four years of reading, I've really expanded and I read a lot of different genres in general, but a lot of my books that I read are adult, adult thrillers, adult horror, and it's become something that I've loved deeply. <laughs> I really love the way horror can interrogate people in general. You put people in a really horrific situation, you're going to get to the very essence of their soul. As dramatic as that is, that's when you see who a real person is. They're forced to make decisions that will deeply affect them and that's when the reality of who they are as a person comes to the surface. A lot of times in books, you know, there's some sneaky people and you never really, you don't know, like if something like that happened to them, like what would they do? I, I want to explore that. <laughs> if you have followed me in the past at all, which I don't know, I don't know if anyone's still here. I post pretty infrequently. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> but you know, I'm in a new, new situation of my life. I have a full-time job. I'm graduated from school. I'm not in school ever again, which is a weird concept to come to terms with as a a bitch who was in school for your whole life you're suddenly not like this year has been a year of me fully out of school been able to read more get back into my hobbies and just being peaceful you know you don't have homework at the end of the night so this is me assigning myself some homework like i don't know what to do with myself i finished my job and like that's it it's a nine to five and it's also a remote position mostly so i don't have to do all of this commuting that also eliminates a lot of time in your day and i really want to focus some of my creative juices into creating something. I've always felt like I was supposed to create something, whether it is YouTube videos that people can enjoy, whether it is a book that people can enjoy, <laughs> or a film even. I, I've studied literature and I've studied film and I really enjoy it. I just enjoy anything creative that someone can put their heart and soul into and then they push it out into the world and other people can enjoy it. People come across it that they know nothing about them, but they're still able to enjoy it and get to the root of the story and understand something that the author was trying to create, whether they meant to or not. So I have a really long-winded way of saying that I'm super excited about my most recent writing project and I was gonna participate in NaNoWriMo. I think people are mad at NaNoWriMo right now. There's been some drama, um, but you know, at the root of it, NaNoWriMo is just writing 50,000 words in the month of November. So I'm still gonna do that. Today is October 30th and I am just super excited. I don't even know where this video is gonna go. I would like to make updates. I used to do writing vlogs. I have always been a super disorganized writer and that's why I've never really been successful. I mean, I have completed a couple drafts of things and I just don't go back to them. I do not put the effort into attacking them, revising them, and getting them into any sort of readable position. And a part of that problem has been I've always underplanned underplotted things to the point where I'm constantly changing my mind during the drafting stage to the point where thousands and thousands of words end up being useless because I completely changed the course. Like none of that makes sense anymore. So in the past, I have just pushed through, you know, I was like, I'll fix this later. Like I changed everything and it's gonna make everything like horrible and hell to fix. I'll fix it later. I never fixed it later. And honestly, that story 
<laughs> needs to stay buried. I finally have let go of that one and I was given a new spark of an idea. I wish I wrote down like when this idea came to me because it's been ruminating in my thoughts for quite some time now and I've been brainstorming, I've been writing notes about it, but this past two months is when I've gotten like a lot more serious about writing down my outline and pulling up on my computer, Scrivener, because I do love Scrivener, and using Save the Cat Writes a Novel. I got this new YA edition and even though I'm not currently writing YA, which is strange, this is still extremely useful and anyone can use this. It's really just the YA edition because it gives examples using really well-known YA books. So, you know, as someone who's read pretty much every single one of the examples, it's super useful. Um, but also this is like the new and improved edition of the original book by Jessica Brody, where she incorporates the Save the Cat screenplay model into a novel model. <laughs> Uh, but this is her updated version and there's a bit more information. My friend Brittany just recommended like this is the one like this is the one to use if you're really gonna get in it. And I really got in it like I read almost all of this. There's a couple chapters I skipped because they just didn't pertain to my story right now. Um, but I do still want to go back and read it because I might have different stories, ideas in the future that would need that. This has been super useful. There is, I don't remember how many beats, how many beats are to a novel? I don't know. It's the three act structure that simplifies each act into a series of beats. And this book really dives into how every book you freaking love has these beats. It really helps you to identify them, explain them, and how you can incorporate that into your story and give it a structure. And, you know, obviously every story is different and this might not perfectly work out for everything, but, you know, it talks about being able to morph it into your own situation. So this has been super helpful in my outlining process and this has been the reason I've been able to figure out so much shit about my story because as someone who has been a pantser, someone who writes by the seat of their pants for the majority of my life, it's really hard for me to dig deep and figure these things out before I'm already in the drafting stage because, and I know this, I know this about myself, I'm going to start writing this for my NaNoWriMo situation and I am going to discover things that I could have never imagined because I really am an exploratory, like intuitive writer. Like I, I can't feel it fully until I'm in that character's head. Like I'm fully writing it and exploring that world. So I know things are going to change, but I do have some pretty basic beats figured out that I do think should mostly stick. I have my characters figured out enough where I should have some idea of what they would do, <laughs> you know? So, but still, a character cannot flesh itself out to me fully until I've written it. I just, I cannot know my main character, Ruth, to the extent that I will, you know, give me a couple weeks. I'm gonna know her so much better. I just, I have a block in my head and I wish I could be an outliner to some people's extent where they just know their character so deeply before they ever write a word. And I just can't do that. I know some pretty important information about her life, but her actual personality, I have an idea of what it will be, but often when I start writing, that personality takes a whole new life that I could not have predicted. I'm all over the place because I'm just excited, <laughs> but it is a horror novel. I love horror movies. This book takes inspiration for so many horror movies that I love, specifically paranormal movies. Ghosts, pretty much. I love ghosts. I believe in ghosts. I believe I've seen one. This book is sparked from a ghost that I saw in my own house walking into my parents' room. I, I, <laughs> I saw that screamed, turned the lights on, you know, she disappeared. And my just, my brain went turning. It was like 3 a.m. Did I actually see her? Who knows? I did have a different ghost experience in that house with my sister. We both saw the same ghost, two different occurrences, but we have the same description. So I do believe there has been a ghost sighting in my life. Is this one rock solid? I'm not sure, but it did give me something. I, I saw something and it sparked a whole line of thinking that conjured up this book idea for me. 
because I, I mean, the typical image of a woman in white, like that is a common, like a dark hair woman in white. That is the ghost that so many people know and appreciate <laughs> in like so many movies, ideas, everything. Like we know that ghost. So I just Googled like, what does that mean? Like, what does that usually represent? And whether this is true or not, I read something about how it's just like a symbol of possession. And something about me is I've always kind of like written about possession. My YA fantasy that I rewrote like 15,000 times, I mean, did deal with some fantastical possession of someone else in someone's mind. Like, I just find that so interesting. Someone fighting for their sanity, pretty much. And yeah, so the root of this is my main character, Ruth. She has been haunted by the same woman for quite some time, um, but it's getting more and more serious and it takes over her life completely. And there is a lot of shit that happens to her within her youth because of this ghost and the connection that she has with the spirit realm and, you know, we are catapulted into the future, the time period that my novel actually takes place, where she's going to have to return to this town that is so much rooted in pain for her with this ghost that just destroyed so much of her life and so much of her family's life. She has to come back. <laughs> and she has some pretty poppin' true crime podcasts. You know, I just had to throw that in there. And we're gonna explore what really happened here? Because we think we know what happened, but did we? We don't know what happened. So there's a lot of shit that's gonna get revealed, obviously. I'm not gonna share more than that. I I believe people steal ideas. <laughs> like, that is unfortunately a thing that happens. And you know, that was vague enough. Like, there's so many books, movies that kind of have that plot of like someone coming back to their small town and facing their trauma. And oh my God, they're haunted by a ghost and there's a haunted house. So, like, you know, a lot of things deal with that. So it doesn't sound very original or new, but my take on it, I hope, is interesting enough that it's something. <laughs> I'm also gonna grapple with chronic pain, chronic illness. I am very chronically ill. I just discovered even more issues with myself and got diagnosed with a whole autoimmune disease I didn't know about. So much of that is a part of my identity and something that I experience every single day. So for a while, I've really wanted to have a character of mine deal with that. It can be really depressing and boring to just have someone constantly be like, oh, I'm in pain, like this sucks, whatever. Um, but I really want to put that in my story and it's, it is everyday life. Like dealing with chronic pain, having your head explode just like every freaking day and you just have to keep going, like nothing really helps. Every time I find a book that explores that, it's so important to me because <laughs> I don't know, anyone with chronic pain, um, I'm experiencing all types of different chronic pain now, but you know, that one specifically, migraines, headaches, I mean, people don't even understand what a migraine is until you, you, you might have one like one every year, one every two years, but there's people like me that like not medicated at all. I mean, they have 20 in one month, like not just a cute little headache, like this is soul crushing, ice pick to the skull rip your eyeballs out type of pain <laughs> like, and you just have to keep going on and waiting and hoping that someone can help you it sucks <laughs> so i don't know i i feel like that is a very horrific thing and could be explored in a horror novel in an interesting way as well and i do have a twist on it so i'm excited to explore that i figured out my book as much as i possibly can before I hit that mental block of like, I just can't. Like I've written almost 3000 words of the draft so far because I'm, I'm trying to get my little start to it. So once, you know, in two days, it's November, I'll be ready and it won't be like aching in pain trying to get these words out. And sometimes it really is. I am a perfectionist. So it's really hard for me to let loose and just let the words not be freaking final draft material. The first draft is going to suck for everyone and you just have to accept that. So that's something that I'm struggling to accept. 
<laughs> that I can make these words like way more polished and more interesting in the future. I just gotta get the bones out. Like I have to get these ideas out. The rest can come later. There's so many details that I want to figure out and research more and then add in later. And I'm like, I, I, can, I can do it later. But as a girl who loves to draft and then leaves it to dust and doesn't revise it, that's hard for me to wrap my head around. So I'm excited for that process. I really feel like this book is the one that's gonna change it for me. I really feel at this point in my life and my career that I'm ready to actually put the time into this. I've done it before. I've gotten myself to be very like on a schedule and writing every day or like multiple times a week. I know it's possible for me, but it's just the ability to get yourself to do it. And I think I'm ready for that. I think it is time. It's been time. I know I'm a good writer. I know I can write some pretty sentences, but can I write a fully fleshed, well thought out novel? Like that is what I want to know. Like, yes, I can make a couple paragraphs sound nice, but can I really develop these characters? I haven't really given myself the opportunity to know that because I, I don't have drafts that are good enough to even share with people to get feedback with yet. You know, I, I just, I'm excited for this journey and I'm documenting it right now because I want to be held accountable. Like I don't want to just give up on this and never actually do this. I'm excited. Like I want this to be the start of something new. And I know the publishing industry is just in utter shambles and like this is not a great time to be an author <laughs> but like is there ever you know it's a really hard industry and obviously i hope to one day have my book published that's been a dream my whole life but that's not what we're focusing on right now <laughs> you know i need to write it the book has to be made for that to ever be a thought i'm excited to see where this takes me i haven't felt this excited about an idea in so long. I don't know. I just don't think I was mentally able to do school, a job, and write a novel. Like that, it just, I know there's other people that do that and I respect y'all so much, but I just could not balance all of that. And now I feel like I'm at a place in my life where maybe I can balance this and that this can actually be doable. That is my writing update. I guess that's it for now. And let me know if you're writing anything, if you are going to be writing 50,000 words in November or at least attempting to like I am, I'm really nervous and scared and hopefully I don't give you an update a month later from now and be like, I didn't do anything. You know, if I don't reach 50,000 words, it's okay. Um, but I hope I at least like get a good chunk in there. You know, I do not want to give up. I'm tired of being useless and just saying I want to be an author someday, but then not doing it. The effort has to come some time and i feel like now personally is the time wish me luck i'll see y'all later let me know how your writing's going then goodbye